Charterman, Charterman Rhyme Charterman, Charterman, Charterman Rhyme Greedy comics, twins are hella sick Hell whackin' it, take a bad hit Take a bad hit, Charterman uh, Subscribe What's up you guys, Shardimus Prime here, doing my very first review on a Storm Collectibles action figure on the Street Fighter V Arcade Edition New York Comic Con 2018 exclusive Chun-Li. Trying to get your Storm Collectibles figures, you can do so at Big, 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 get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. And I gotta give a big thanks to x 87 and Justine for helping me get my New York Comic Con exclusives. I got this and one other one, so I really appreciate it, you guys standing in the line and all that stuff and making it possible for me to buy these figures. I recommend you check out their Instagram, links in the description below. Anyway, on the side right here we get this nice image of Chun-Li, I like that so much. And then on the very back we get all these beautiful looking product shots, I like them all so much. And then on this side you get that same image of Chun-Li. On the very top it says Street Fighter V Arcade Edition, Capcom right there. And on the very bottom not much going on except a warning, uh, you cannot be younger than 17 to own these. It's just too sexy for you, you gotta wait till you're 17 man. Alright, let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's Chun-Li! out of the packaging and I gotta say for my first storm collectibles figure I am pretty impressed I like what they've done here with some of the plastic choices of course there's a lot of articulation over there and just the, you know the aesthetics alone I mean I like it you know it looks pretty good we also get a lot of accessories with this piece too so I want to get a closer look at those and then we'll get a closer look at Chun-Li in her battle costume before we get into the actual accessories I did want to show off the inside cardboard right over here that has this nice little display option I took a couple pictures pictures like this. I usually don't like these too much, but I don't know. There's something about this that I found appealing. I think it's the flesh tone on the figure just looked better with this as a backdrop as opposed to my regular white backdrop where she tends to disappear a little bit. And then looking at the instructions right here, I think they're pretty good. So I like that. I'm very happy that we get these cool directions. And then here's all the actual accessories that we get with this Chun-Li figure. We get four pairs of interchangeable hands plus one extra right hand. We get three interchangeable heads and three different hair pieces to go with those. And then we get her projectile effect right here and a display stand which I like a lot this is pretty cool we get a clamp right here so you could use this on the Chun-Li figure and you can see that we get four joints right here one thing that's pretty nifty is that the screws are actually in opposite sides as it goes down so there's screw on this side and then screw on this side and then screw on this side but you can't go in here and tighten this up so it's very ratchety and it works pretty well uh, you could also remove this right here and then plug in one of these they give you two of them just so in case you lose one you have a spare and we can get her whole projectile. Uh, is this the shuriken, right? Her fireball. But I think this thing is really awesome. I like the glossy translucent blue that we're seeing right over here. And as the directions say, you want to take this piece and kind of just wrap it around this one. And there's a little tab that sticks out there. And there's a port for that tab. Kind of just make sure that you search around. There it is. You can see it right there. And just turn it and get that tabbed in. And then there's another tab all the way up here. And there that goes. So that's pretty nifty. And then you can see there's a hole right over here for the stand. And you can just plug that in. And now we have this up in the air, and that's pretty cool that you could do that, and you could, you know, set it up however you'd like. Uh, as far as the hands go, we have the fisted hands, and you can see that they have all the fingers painted right there for the fingernails, so I think that's pretty nifty. And then we get this flat hand right here, like a karate chop kind of hand. And one thing that's really cool is that the plastic is very soft. You know, at first I thought this was kind of cheap, but then, you know, as I've been playing with the figure more, I was like, you know what, this is actually a smart move, because you know, it's pretty durable. And then you get these two uh, flat hands right here and then you also get these two wide open hands and then you get the one extra right hand right here which is kind of like in between you know these last two I don't know exactly how necessary it is maybe for a special move in the game but yeah black nail polish for all of them then we get the three different faces and I think these are all pretty good uh, you can see that we get the kind of just regular you know expressionless kind of face right there so that's pretty neat I like how the paint came out for the eyes and everything for her makeup and stuff and she has these little tassels right here that you can swing back and forth and they're made out of soft material these will pop off on you you know fairly easily and you can see it got a little bit of brown right over there from her hair uh, on her cheek and they can be kind of tricky to port back in here but it's not that bad and then you can see that this one right here she's a lot more serious so the other one kind of has smirk now she's all really serious right there and then here she is even more serious and she's screaming so yeah I like all three of these they look great and then you have the different hairs so you can you know plug these on any one of them and again a very very soft 
pliable plastic right here. So I think that's pretty cool. But yeah, you can see that we have the hair coming straight down on this one. And then you can have the hair flying back with this one right here. I think that is really cool. I like this one a lot. Then there's the one that's wafting off to the side too. So that's pretty cool. Now my biggest gripe with this figure is that as soon as I got this thing out of the packaging, it was like this whole piece was sticking out of the body. So I had a hard time getting this neck to work with me because this piece would, would stay stuck to whichever head I had it onto. And I saw somebody else do a review. Uh, I can't remember the name right off the top of my head, but yeah, I'll reply to the comment if you, if you catch it. But uh, yeah, you just go ahead and super glue the peg in there and you want to be super careful that you're not catching any of this rubbery material around the neck. Uh, big thanks again to Siri Emerald for hooking me up with some awesome super glue. And I was able to get it into that joint and not catch any of the rubber right here. So this has actually been working out perfectly fine since then. But at first I was really upset about that. And to this moment, I'm still kind of bummed out. I feel like it loses a point right there for having to do that, especially with my first experience with the Storm Collectibles figure. But it ended up working out for me. I wanted to demonstrate putting one of the heads on here uh, just because it's, I don't know, a little tricky. You just want to make sure you don't have the hair on there first. And now that I have this all super glued inside, it actually works out pretty well. And then I like to plop the head or, or the hair on there after I have the head attached. Again, I really like the face sculpts. Even her cheeks seem to have a little bit of blush going on right there. But looking at the rest of this figure, oh man. Okay, so I can't believe they actually did this, but this whole upper torso right here is made out of a squishy material. So she actually has a uh, squishy chichas. I, I can't believe they made an action figure with squishy chichas. That actually happens. For instance, if you move the arms upward and you press them together, you know, yeah, that, that, that happens. But I really like the detailed paint that we're seeing right here. I feel like the upper torso could have been, or the lower torso could have been just a little bit longer. Just a little bit more space right here would have been nice, but I do like it. I think it looks great. I really like her flesh tone. I think her flesh tone looks beautiful. Nice gold paint apps right over here on the wrists. That's pretty cool, or on the bracelets anyway. And we get this little tassel piece right here, which I think is pretty cool. And then, yeah, nice gold paint throughout. And then I just took the hair off right there. The back muscle looks really good. We got a lot of good articulation in this figure. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. And then there's a Chun Li Nagas right there. And she has the whole thong thing going on. And the front has the bikini thing going on right here, too. So don't worry about that. That's all covered up right underneath there. And then this looks pretty good. Nice gold trim right all the way throughout here. That looks really nice. So yeah, a lot of really soft material, but a lot of details as well. You know, you can even see the sculpt right there. The legs look fantastic. Beautiful and huge muscular legs. And the calves look really good right here too. And then here's looking at her feet. She has her shoes on right there. With this nice gold going throughout. No peg holes, but we do have texturing at the very bottom right there. Now, one thing I didn't mention that I think I should have mentioned is that I get a little frustrated about how this whole seam right here in the middle doesn't line up directly in the middle right here or with the cleavage. You know what I mean? I, I feel like that's a little frustrating. But anyway, I do like the articulation, but there are some limitations, uh, even with the whole super gluing that peg in there. And make sure you wiggle it around as it dries. You know, do that at your own risk. I just don't want you guys breaking your figure in or anything. But anyway, you can make her head look up that much and she will look down pretty far. You get side to side motion and good head pivot and you can move these little hair pieces around as I already talked about. Uh, we have a butterfly joint in the shoulder that can move forward and back and that can shift up and down. We also get a shoulder joint that can move outward that far and forward and, can, or, and down and you can rotate 360. Uh, you get a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows and then all the wrists turn side to side and hinge up and down or side to side depending on how you have that configured. We have a diaphragm joint that turns side to side. You get good diaphragm pivot and she crunches forward a lot and back a bit. She also has a waist joint in here that mostly turn side to side. You can move it forward and back and pivot just only a tiny bit at that waist joint. She has hip joints that move out pretty far, but she cannot do a full on split. Uh, you can see that yeah, there we go. You could get the legs moving outward that much, maybe a little bit more so if you want to play with it some more. Uh, I feel like I kind of shifted something in the way when I was moving that waist joint. You can see her butt's all weird right now. So yeah, I have to fix that. I can see the plastic is caught underneath the waist joint. So I just have to shift that around. It's really weird using this really soft plastic, but there you go. I fixed her butt. Okay, her butt's fixed. Anyway, she can kick forward pretty far and back. Uh, she has no real thigh swivel, but you can just shift this a little bit right up there. And then she has double jointed knees. I wish these could bend in just a little bit more so than that, but she has really thick legs. And then her ankles do move down. They don't move up, which is one of my biggest gripes with the articulation on this figure. It's really hard to get a figure to stand and do a lot of poses if the ankles can't move up much. I mean, that's just as much as up you're going to get from the ankles. So that's frustrating. Uh, she 
she does have ankle pivot, which actually took a minute for me to break in, but you can see we get some ankle pivot right over there. And she does have toe articulation. And to measure out this Chun-Li figure, you can see that she's standing just shy of seven inches tall. And then for a Chun-Li in her battle costume comparison, we have the Storm Collectibles action figure next to the Kotobu Kiba Shoujo Chun-Li statue. And I feel like the flesh tone on this is actually a little light compared to this one. I did look up some clips of people playing Street Fighter V, and I think this skin tone is actually a bit more accurate than this one right here. But don't get me wrong, I still love them both, okay? And then for another Chun-Li comparison, we have our SH Figure Arts Chun-Li next to our Storm Collectibles Chun-Li. And as far as current Street Fighter figures go, it looks like it's these two companies right here that take the lead. I do like the SH Figure Arts figures a lot. I don't know if I'm going to start a whole other Street Fighter collection from Storm Collectibles, but I did order the Bloody Goro from BBTS, so yeah, I will have more Storm Collectibles reviews to come. And then here's Chun-Li next to Soda Toys figure, which is arguably the best manufacturer for Street Fighters figures. Thank you, Joe Capone. Uh, yeah, but we have T-Hawk right here next to Chun-Li, and I don't know if these two scale perfectly together or not. I'm gonna say no. I don't know if I've played enough Street Fighter to really give a good judgment call right there, but I feel like T-Hawk could still be even larger than Chun-Li. I don't know. You let me know in the comments below. And then here's Chun-Li next to your average six-inch scale figure. We have the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. Hey, Chun-Li, I always wondered, how do you kick so fast? I always try practicing that and <laughs> never <laughs> kick as fast as you can. How do you do that? Oh! I gotta thank you guys once again for watching my video. I really do appreciate it when you guys watch these videos all the way from the beginning to the end, especially when you hit that like button. If you like the video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this figure. Let me know what you think of the review. And if you have not hit that subscribe button yet, as well as the notification bell, please go ahead and do so right now. Uh, I gotta say, I really like this figure. I mentioned I liked it many times. I was really, really upset at the beginning though with that whole neck peg thing. That really bummed me out because it came out loose. Uh, just opening it up first off, and that was my first experience with it. So yeah, I was pretty disheartened at the beginning of my experience with this figure. And then after I'd gotten that fixed up, yeah, I, I have just been having a great time with it ever since then. So yeah, thanks for the tip, Plastic Addict. And uh, yeah, I gotta say, man, this is a good looking piece. I gotta give it a high sud rating of... I love it! And I'd like to know what you guys think, so please let me know down in the comments section below. If you want to see the latest in action figure news and forums, you can find it all over at ToyNewsEye.com. And don't forget to follow me on my social media over on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. Links to everything in the description below. I'll catch you guys later. Peace! Hey, new Shark Miss Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.